Welcome to ICA's video channel, taking the message of Jesus Christ to the world. For more information, go to our website at icahk.org. Very thankful and blessed that I have been invited by Pastor Ed to speak with you today that God has a good plan for you. Amen. Would you, would you mind saying that to your neighbor, please? And then say, God has a good plan for you. To both of your neighbors, you say it. God has a good plan for you. <laughs> and before, we, before I start with my message, I'd like to ask some help from you. Would you mind closing your eyes for a moment? And then imagine the words that I say. You think it deeply. You think it through. Imagine that you are in a dark room. Nobody else sees you. There was no one else in that room except you. And there were only four corners in that room. That means it's a square or a rectangular shape, it doesn't matter. Four corners in that room and then suddenly you saw a light. And that light flashed through your eyes. And there were the days that when you were born, you imagine the day when you were born, maybe you saw some pictures when you were just a little baby, and then you became a toddler. You, you started playing with your stuff, toys, being played with your parents, etc. And then you became teenagers. You started wondering some stuff and many more. Then you became, you turned out into your adolescent period, college. And then your married life, if you are married, and then up until today. Now you may open your eyes. In those parts of the picture that you saw inside your mind or inside your head, you saw troubles. Am I right? Some of your memories consist of hurts and pains. Some of your memories consist of disappointments. Very seldom we see those happy parts. And we try to recap those memories as much as possible, but oftentimes, we get so triggered by emotions all the time. Am I right? And those who agree with me, say amen. amen. Would you like to raise your hand if you did so? Thank you for being honest. Now we have a character in the Bible named Joseph and his experiences in life could be just as yours. Now I'm, I'm not talking about the Joseph Mary and I, right now I'm talking about the Joseph King of Dreams. In my early teenage years, I had the same dream, but it wasn't about the moon and the stars and the rice something are bowing down to, to him. But this is about, I dreamed of myself leading a large congregation into worship. And that was one of my passion. It was one of my most treasured dream I wanted to have a long, long time ago. And I even dreamed of going to Hillsong's International Leadership College. If you knew my email, it would say M-E-H-I-L-C, blah, 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 blah. That's part of it. And it's deeply embedded in my heart. It says, I need to go to this area. I need to study in Hillsong's International Leadership College so I can grow more inside of me how to lead worship, how to do worship, and how to teach people to worship. And then at the age of, let's say, 19, 20, etc. I started leading, not all the time, but just sometimes, I started lead, leading here at ICHI1, the worship. And there were a lot of people in here. There were a thousand and plus more, and we have three services back then. And it was a good thing for me. I felt so good because there were so many people. I felt really good, honestly. Who wouldn't, who wouldn't feel good if you, if you find yourself standing in front of a lot of people? 
Of course you would, right? You'll feel happy, you'll feel so favored that you were able to be asked to pray and lead that worship. And then I started applying for my first lodging of application in the year 2004. But during the year 2004 to 2009, I will be discussing it later, I applied in 2009 again. I passed all the exams, all the requirements, and everything. There was nothing else that I need to pass, except one thing that brought me down, brought me low. My visa application for Australia had been denied. I was so broke. I cried. Sometimes even after, until now, and then I would ask, Lord, why? It was my dream, and you didn't allow it. And then God comforted my heart, and he said, it's okay. Because, Emmy, I have a good plan for you. Now say that to your neighbors again. I have a better plan for you instead. <laughs> okay, you know, some of these dreams, desires that we have sometimes, or most of the times, are just not the exact plan that God has for you and me. Most of the time, God gives us desires and dreams, and we wanted to accomplish it very quickly. But God timing is, God's timing is always the best. God's timing is always perfect. Sometimes it can be delayed. Sometimes the answer is no, but God has a better plan for you. He places our lives in proper order so we can grow and mature in a good way. God tests our spirits and our character. You know what I, what I visioned? When I was leading worship with a large number of people, I became proud myself. I was so proud that Oh, yeah, people know me. Oh, yeah, people think I'm good. Oh, yeah, this and that. But that is not the perfect thing that God wants for you. God does not want you to be famous. Of course he does. But look at your spirits. Look at your heart. Is it that your heart is right with God? Do you think that your heart is right with God when you do worship leading and your heart is proud? Something is wrong. Something is missing. Then the question now is, how can we be assured about, the God's, about God's good plan for us? How can we be like Joseph? You know Joseph? Joseph spent 13 years away from his family. And then he knew that his dream from the past will take place only 10 years or 13 years after. He didn't know. And he didn't even ask for it. It was not his choice. But God gave him that vision. God gave him that dream. And then how can we handle in times of testing and harnessing? There are the things that we need to remember to keep ourselves and our hopes up, and we can apply every day. This was just a part of my suggestion. And according to what I have experienced, we can apply it every day. I want you to be assured that God has a good plan for you. First thing, God knows you as a person. And everything about you is not an accident. Joseph was born to Rachel, whom Jacob loved, but God didn't allow Rachel to have the firstborn child because Jacob was forced to marry, marry Leah first, and he took 10 children from three different women before the birth of Joseph. But Jacob loved Rachel, but he wasn't the firstborn child. 
I know it's also not an accident that I was born an only child. <laughs> My parents tried their best. How many times? From year three, maybe, or four, up until 18, 19, 20 years? Just me. <laughs> Nothing else. They wanted to have three, four kids, but one, and this is it. I have almost three. <laughs> I have two kids out of in my tummy, and I have one more inside of me. <laughs> but you know, my parents tried many times in years, but nothing. So this I want to tell you, God knew me before I was born. And God already knew that I will be the only child. As for you, God already knew that you will be first, second, third, fourth, or only child in your family. And God knows every ranking in your family. And what's important is God has a good plan for you. Now say that again to your neighbors. God has a good plan for you. Psalms 139 verse 13 it says, for you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. Me as a pregnant lady, I, I, I cannot say I'm a girl because I'm already a grown up. <laughs> I'm already 30 plus, can't reveal my age, <laughs> but that's fine. <laughs> I eat every day, I drink every day, I, I eat different kinds of food. Sometimes because my first three years to four, at first three months to four months of pregnancy, it was very delicate. I would vomit most of the time, I would feel dizzy and blah, 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 I even collapsed inside our house. It was a good thing my husband was there. <laughs> I didn't know I was pregnant. But every day, this baby inside of me is growing. I don't know what's taking place. <laughs> Sometimes there's a little ticklish around somewhere here or up here. I don't know how's, how's the baby is formed. I don't even know the gender yet. Sometimes Sophia would say, oh, mommy, I'll call her Mary. Well, how can you call her Mammy? What, what if she's a boy? <laughs> and then I will say a different name. What kind of name? I'll ask daddy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, even if you were adopted, listen to this, even if you were adopted, even if you were, you know, disgra disgraciada or something, na disgracia, na buntis, even if someone has, you know, gotten you pregnant, the baby inside of you, God has a good plan for it. God has a good plan for that kid. Every single person in this room, God has a good plan for you, regardless of your experiences. God has a good plan for you. Number two, God knows you through your pains. In Genesis 37, verse 12 to 36, and 39, verse 1, the story went in about Brothers hate towards Joseph and a big lie to Jacob. Why? Because they hated Joseph because of his dreams. But, but was it Joseph's fault that he had the dream so he can be hated by his brothers? It wasn't because God put the dreams in Joseph. It was never Joseph's dream to have the dream. But God put the dream in Joseph. He dreamt in his sleep. How will you know things around you when you are asleep? Everybody's already rubbing the house and you were asleep, and then you would say, oh, yeah, I know it. If I <laughs> you didn't know. And when Joseph's brother's hate grew stronger, they tried to kill him. But Reuben stood for Joseph. Instead of killing him, they decided to sell him. He was not sold once, but he was sold twice. First to the Midianites, 
and then the money was taken up by and, and then the money was taken by by the Midianites and then he was taken up by the Ishmaelites brought him to Egypt and then the Ishmaelites sold him to Potiphar and then he was there and then when he was sold imagine Joseph's pain and disappointment he was hated by his brothers it was hard what if I'm the only child and my mom sold me somewhere else out of for no reason at all then maybe when I grew up I would harbor anger inside my heart but Joseph didn't he must have felt sadness and grief and anger against his brothers but God was always just with Joseph and Joseph always believed in God and he believed and he knew that God has a plan for him even if he was sold two times in the house of Potiphar he was accused and then he was put in jail in my side when I had the dream about going to the school in HILC my parents are very happy and supportive but some don't feel good about it right? there's nothing I can do they say my voice is not perfect they say my voice is not so low and I am not fit to worship to lead worship and I felt really bad about it I would hear some people around me talking and they didn't notice I was there and then they would say oh Emmy's voice is not really good you know it's painful <laughs> it really crushes my heart so hard so bad but I went on I just kept on dreaming and then I would put in my mind Lord I don't care what they say as long as you put the desire in me it's okay I will be fine because you have a good plan for me and then this is now my biggest story within 2004 and 2009 I had my first relationship I was madly in love with a guy and you say woo <laughs> and I thought that he was the best so I told myself yeah Lord he's the man I was so in love that even if he courted me only through text and calls because he was away from his country he was away from Hong Kong he lives in another country confidential so <laughs> just to be <laughs> for confidentiality purposes <laughs> I said yes to the relationship and I remembered what my mom said that doesn't mean you and him having a relationship together means you're the one fit together maybe the Lord only tries you to be there only allows you to be there so you would learn something else but I disregarded that and then it was because it, for me it was easy because she and my mom and, and her mom his mom and my mom are both good friends very good friends and then to cut this story short in 2008 two years after I got committed with him suddenly a huge bomb boom fell right into my face there was this girl from somewhere confidential <laughs> who sent me an email previously she used my friendster account because that they hindi pa ginagamit masyado yung facebook so back then was friendster yun ang uso and then all the facts brought me to reality she sent marriage contract birth certificate and in fact he already had an eight months old child I don't blame him for it because it's his story 
I know God also have a good plan for him. And I, it's okay, because I have a better life now. <laughs> but it was so painful. If he is technically married, then that makes me so painful. I didn't know about him being married. All I knew was that my mom knows his mom, and his mom told me he's single. So I, it's okay because they knew each other, and you know, it was easy for me. So I felt so devastated, ashamed of myself, even if I didn't know, even it was not my fault. Regardless of the numbers of times he tried to cover the truth about his story, there are proofs that he couldn't escape from. Then things got worse when another bomb shattered again. Boom, boom. Kasi two times. <laughs> he broke my heart one more time because a woman texted me from somewhere else again that she is pregnant by my ex. How would you find me? <laughs> How would you see me now? <laughs> Maybe we have the same. <laughs> but you know, I tried to pray. Maybe you would think that I am crazy. In, uh, in my own room, I would hang his jacket, his pants, because <laughs> he left some stuff before we, before we uh, parted ways before. I was hanging it right over there in our cabinet. And I would pray day and night, Lord, release him from any of <laughs> You know, Lord, <laughs> I lay my hands over this clothes that you would anoint him wherever he is. And that I would pray that you spare his life because he's mine, he's mine. But I didn't realize that God was trying to spare me, not him. God was trying to put me in another area because God has a better plan for me. Yes. Same as you. God has a better plan for you. No wonder why sometimes what you dreamed about is not what's happening to you right now. Because God has already put you in the proper place where you should be. All you have to, to do is follow and allow God to touch your hearts and touch your lives. So in my situation, I try to gather all of the evidences I can get all the text messages that I got from the other witness so that me and his family would not have any heartaches against me. And I tried to break off the relationship with those documents, with those text messages, with those black and whites. So they would not say that it's my fault. I'm not blaming him. Maybe it was just a desire that he couldn't resist. You know, I still pray over for him that God will still lead him and direct him to the right path. Maybe now he is, I don't know. But God has a good plan for him too. And God has a good plan for me also. So when we do, when we do follow the will of the Lord, our testimonies are sharpened and harnessed. And we become valid living testimonies. And then we become a blessing. Amen. God shows his plan for you to be a blessing to other people. When Joseph was brought, was bought by Potiphar from the Midianites and Ishmaelites, he was taken up to jail because of false accusations. Right after that, he spent two years in prison. And then he was forgotten by the chief baker, I think, or the cup bearer, by the cup bearer about his dreams that, came, that took place for real. And then in the eyes of Pharaoh, he had a dream too. I will not elaborate all about the dreams, but it was only Joseph who could only interpret the dreams. 
same as your situations and my situations, you are the only person capable of interpreting the dreams of other people because of your experiences and the desires that God has put inside your heart. And we will always claim the victory that God has got a good plan for you and me. And it's always for a year, for real. So now, that in the case of my relationship, I became a blessing in a way that people, some people don't know my past experience, but they came up to me and asked for my opinion, asked for my help. People with broken relationships, people who are broken hearted, people who were cheated, they don't know I can relate directly to them because it was my experience. You know, the Lord allows you to go through pains and hardship because God wants you to directly feel how other people feel. And then you become a blessing to them because you know exactly how you went through. And then you will know what to say because you have experienced it. If you don't have the experience and you lack the, the, the experience that anything, you go to a job interview and you don't know anything about it, of course you will not pass. But with those experiences and you went to that job interview, very easy. Very easy, I tell you. Most of us here have so much experiences. And we could easily, you know, Filipino people are very, easily, very easy to talk with. You have a problem, we have so many solutions. <laughs> one problem, just write it down. Ah, hey, you can try this one. Yeah. Oh, how about this one? This doesn't work? No, okay, try this one. Easy. We have earthquakes, landslides, bagyo, storms. <laughs> Ano pa? Name it. We have it. Volcanic eruptions. We have them all. Flooding and everything. Experiences in life, relationships, number one. Filipinos. So if you have a problem, go to them. Okay, now let's get back to my application. Months before I in ended my relationship with my ex, I wasn't ready for another. But in less than two years, God has given me a better man. That now is my husband. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> you spared my life. <laughs> and I wouldn't say our relationship back then was very easy because... The more he's single, the more things got even more complicated. Why? Because I live here and he lived in the Philippines. And then most people would say, he doesn't fit my requirements. He would only come to Hong Kong for money. That we don't fit each other. So just to, you know, just to set things fairly, I made up my decision, okay, I will pursue my studies in Australia again for the second time. So I tried to pass again because the, the, the school sent me another email. If you are interested again, please do let us know, blah, blah, blah. And I tried. I applied for it. Eventually, Unfortunately for me, I got denied. For some reason, financial. Because my family, our family in, in Australia, at that exact time, bought a house. So they don't have enough expenses to support me throughout my studies. We have our means of money. I have my, my money from my work that when I left, they gave me a separation pay, and then my mom tried to loan extra, but it's not enough. So we went on with the plan of getting married, and then we got married January 15, 2011. 
And then when I started having those wonderful dreams and, and, and stuff, I would say, Lord, this is another level of my life. That what I have now is better than an HILC school certificate. My husband became my award. He became my medal. My children, Sophia and Samuel John, and this one, I don't know yet, <laughs> girl or boy. You know my extra awards? My mom, she's my diploma. <laughs> and also my dad who passed away five years ago. He was one of my best memories. So I tell you now, that when God shows his plan for you, you can be a means for the saving of many, just like Joseph. God allowed those negative films to take place so Joseph can develop a better picture of himself. He went through the process so he could save many. In Genesis 50, 20, you intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done. The saving of many lives. And Joseph understood the great plan of God. God restored their relationship. He replaced hate with love and fear with forgiveness. In Genesis 39 verse 2, the Lord was with Joseph so that he prospered and he lived in the house of his Egyptian master. A relationship will never work, you know, if there's only one person involved. There should always be two or more. As they say, it takes two to tango. There is God's part and there is your part. Joseph remained in the presence of the Lord and God never left his side. No matter what situation you are in, or he was in, or I am in, the Lord has never left our side. Because we knew that God will never fail and God has a great plan for you and me. The Lord bless you all. Stand up. All, All my, my life, life you have been so, so good. With every breath that, that I, I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. better plan than the one 
that we have. You know, when I first went into ICA, I started with、um, I started working as superintendent of the children's ministry, and then I be- and then Pastor Ed graduated me to become <laughs> the pastor of the young teens. And when I th- when I st- when I was planning my stepping down from the from、uh, connected to Christ from CTC, I was actually thinking of you know spending the rest of my time in North Point Auditorium until I got an email from Pastor Ed when I was on vacation or the more, also with Lydia, that he asked if I would come to North to Taiwan. And I'm like, Taiwan was never in my plan, but guess what? Taiwan was in God's plan. And I can tell you now, after two years, and we're coming up two years, yay, yeah. After two years, I can tell you I'm in a better place here than I was when I thought I will be what I will be doing in North Point. Amen. Amen. So God has a very good plan for you. You might think that why am I in this house? Why am I in Hong Kong? But I want to tell you, God is the one that bring you here for a purpose. Amen. 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 Okay. So let's. Why don't we sing that chorus again? Because that is a very good. You know, we want to be reminded that God is good. He is a good God for us. Can we do that? Oh my life, you have been. God, Amen. Let's just shout it out to Jesus that you are here because of the good plan of God. Amen. Amen. 